Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel and watching my videos, it really means a lot. So in today's episode, we're gonna be taking a closer look at a fragrance by the company Parfum Vintage, and this one is called Maverick. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin the video, I just wanna say that if you like this type of content, please do consider subscribing to this channel. I would really appreciate it. This way, whenever I do upload future fragrance-related videos, it'll get delivered straight to your feed. And also, if you click that notification bell next to the subscribe button, it'll make sure that you get that push notification sent straight to your phone. There's never any need to type in my name in the search bar to find my videos or anything like that. That's the only sort of support that I'm asking of you. And I also wanna mention that this product was sent to me for review by the company, but of course all opinions will remain my own. And I don't think there are any hard feelings if for some reason the scent doesn't resonate with me because this is a clone. Now, for those of you who don't know, Parfum Vintage is a company that makes their own version of more popular niche or designer fragrances. In the case of this fragrance, despite this being a 2020 release, this is actually their version or their iteration of a fragrance that actually came back came out back in 2004, and it's by Yves Saint Laurent, and it's called M7 Fresh. Now, for those of you who don't know, M7 came out um, many, many years ago under the creative direction of Tom Ford, and it was the first mainstream release that featured the note of oud, and we're talking about designer fragrances. So up until that point, you didn't have any designer fragrance currently on the market that really spotlighted the note of oud. And it got its name because it was the seventh men's release from the company, M7. And of course, uh, given the, I guess, the success and the popularity of that fragrance, they decided to release a flanker of it called M7 Fresh. And it still has this agarwood note. And when I smell it, I'm still getting that creamy, woodsy, slightly smoky nuance in there but they decided to make it fresh by having notes like grapefruit, bergamot, if I'm not mistaken, a clean vetiver, ginger, to add a nice little snap to the beginning. And so it adds these fresh components and these fresh nuances to an otherwise deep, bold, and charismatic and woodsy aroma profile, which I think is a really interesting juxtaposition. And it's one that maybe initially I was concerned wasn't going to work. Very rarely do I find myself really smelling a fresh take on Oud. Uh, probably one of my favorite fresh takes on Oud is a fragrance by The Gate Paris, and it's called Oud Tonic. So it's like a gin and tonic with Oud. That's the best way to describe it. And it smells amazing. Well, I actually really like this one as well. And of all of the bottles that this company sent to me, I always choose my favorite ones to review. And this is one that I do see myself wearing a lot of in the summertime, just because it has a lot of these bright citrusy, uh, that vetiver and the ginger, and a lot of these fresh components to it that just make it a really solid fragrance for the summertime and hot weather in general, depending on the climate that you live in. So I'm excited to tell you a little bit more about the smell, but let's start with the presentation. So the box for this one is white with gold accents. You have the name of the front. The crest may be located on the top of the box. The ingredients are listed on the side. You have this cool graphic on the back of the box here. And the bottom of the box has this quality control sticker on it. Now the bottle for this one has this Parfum Vintage Crest on it. The cap for this fragrance does not click into place, but it is a snug fit. But even then I wouldn't recommend picking it up from the cap because it is a heavy bottle. The bottom of the bottle has the name of the fragrance and your information on it. And the distribution on the atomizer is very wide. Let's continue with the smell. So the opening of this fragrance is uh, what confused me the most initially. So. I kind of like to play this game when I get Parfum Vintage fragrances where I don't know what they are and if you join their Facebook group, uh, if you click on announcements, there's actually a spreadsheet that tells you what all of their fragrances are and what each one is supposed to be a clone of. And I usually don't check that out until the very end. And so I'll smell the fragrance and sometimes I make an immediate connection. If it's one of their pineapple vintage fragrances, I know it's gonna be a, you know, another uh, version of Creed Aventus. But in the case of this one, I smelled something in there that I was able to pick up on, but then it started to go in a different direction that I 
wasn't completely familiar with. And the reason for that is because I actually own the original M7, and I'm talking about the vintage formulation, but I don't own M7 Fresh. So this one actually caught me by surprise. I was like, okay, it smells like it has that hint of familiarity, but it seems to be going in a different direction. It opens up creamy, woodsy, oody in a synthetic way, uh, just because M7 does not contain real oud, that would be incredibly expensive. Um, but it opens up in a really nice, really appealing, sort of a woodsy way. Now, the freshness doesn't hit you right away. And that's why in the beginning, I thought I was certain of what I was smelling, and then it started to shift and morph and change into something else. The freshness actually enters before the oud enters. So the, the oud is what you're going to smell first. It's the first thing to brush up against your olfactory receptors. And then you're gonna pick up on some freshness before everything else, which is kind of funny because whenever you have a citrus heavy fragrance, usually citrus is the very first thing that you're going to smell. But this one, despite the fact that it has this sort of weighty base to it, you know, this agarwood note, uh, there's a lot of it and there's enough that it's actually the first thing that you get in the opening. And if you're not on the lookout for it, it can overwhelm you. So it opens up Udi, but then you can see there's like a musky touch and there's an orange touch. And there's also like a green thing sort of cutting through the formula. And the more you smell it, you start to realize that, you know what? This fragrance is equally fresh as it is woodsy. And this is the type of agarwood note as well that I think a lot of people would prefer. I know the hardcore aficionados and connoisseurs of the note of agarwood uh, really want the real stuff, right? They want the natural thing, and that can sometimes get to be a little bit too expensive. But in addition to it being expensive, it can actually be a little bit too daring and a little bit too challenging for some people. And uh, hey, sometimes, you know, certain varieties of oud, I'm sure we all know, can almost have like a barnyard smell to them. You have none of that going on in here. This is one of the safest and most appealing oud fragrances that one could get their nose on. And for anybody who has actually tried the 2004 version of the original, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about in the case of this fragrance. Now, I do have to say, I cannot give this uh, fragrance a percentage because I don't believe I've ever smelled M7 fresh. Uh, like I said, I only have the original, but I can smell the original in here 100%, but this is totally a fresher version. And I would imagine in terms of the similarity that it bears to M7 fresh, it's very, very close. Uh, the guys at Parfum Vintage, they always get it really, really, really close. I own Rush of Unicorns, which is their version of Millicium Imperial by Creed. I love that one. I also have their version of Creed Arolfa. Love that one. And I have several of their Aventus inspirations and all of those are excellent as well with my favorite being Emperor X-Ray. As far as it pertains to this fragrance, if you like the note of Oud, you're looking for something fresh, but you're looking for something with sustenance. You're looking for something with longevity. You're looking something with a darker undercurrent that will offer a nice contrast to the brighter, more fresher elements in the opening. I would definitely recommend that you check this one out. There are some fragrances like Aqua, which is their version of Invictus Aqua by Paco Rabanne, the 2016 version smells really nice, but you're gonna get most of that freshness in the opening, and then you're gonna get that Tonka Bean base. You don't have something as heavy as what you'll find in this fragrance. And then of course, they have some other hybrids that they've come out with recently, but definitely check this one out. If you are a fan of Parfum Vintage and you were you know, curious about this one, um, it definitely receives my stamp of approval. I think this is a great fragrance. And when I smell this, it just makes me think of how it's kind of a shame that some companies choose to discontinue certain fragrances. I'm sure it's either because they don't sell well or because, you know, there's a trend and it doesn't align with that trend, you know, maybe the trend being sports flankers or whatever. But um, if there's any other fragrance that I can actually compare this one to uh, fragrances that I have in my collection, aside from it smelling like the original M7, it actually also smells a little bit like John Barbados uh, Platinum Edition. I own that fragrance as well, and it has a similar creamy agarwood sort of a thing going on in there. 
but this one is much, much fresher, thus allowing this one to be worn very comfortably in the spring and summer months. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, of course, this is not a unique fragrance, right? This is their version or their inspiration of M7 Fresh by Yves Saint Laurent. But this one is a clone of that discontinued fragrance. And, the, and so for that reason, I really do appreciate what Parfum Vintage is doing because, you know, there are a lot of people who perhaps chose in 2004 to make YSL's M7 Fresh, their signature scent. And uh, following the discontinuation, they are no longer able to wear that fragrance and they have to resort to finding a new signature scent or whatever. And a lot of times it's not even the fact that you don't have a signature scent because there are thousands thousands of fragrances out there that you can choose from. Um, but it's also if you've made certain memories and you know that uh, smell is the most, is the sense that is the most closely related or linked to memory. And so if you don't have that fragrance anymore, and it's almost like the memories are lost with it. And so I'm really happy that Parfum Vintage is doing this and a lot of other companies are doing this as well, but creating their version of discontinued fragrances that, you know, made, their way into the hearts of many people. Uh, in terms of the longevity, you're going to get about seven to eight hours with this one. So for a fresh type of a fragrance, it actually does really, really well. In terms of the projection, fantastic for the first two to two and a half hours. It really isn't until about that five and a half hour mark that it actually starts to sit a little bit closer to the skin but it doesn't really become a skin scent until that six hour mark. But five and a half hours is, you know, definitely radiating within an elbow's length. Uh, you become sort of anosmic to it. And um, yeah, it's one of these fragrances where I think it would benefit you to ask those around you if they can still smell it on you. Because, you know, I think as is the case with many fragrances, uh, you do become the victim of nose fatigue. In terms of versatility, I think it leans masculine uh, just because M7, <laughs> And if you've seen the uh, advertisement for M7, it's uh, a naked guy. And so I can never seem to get that out of my head. Whenever I think of M7, you know, it kind of, uh, it just pops up in there. And so with this fragrance, I think it's the same, you know, I think it does lean masculine because it does bear somewhat of a resemblance to the original. I think this type of fragrance can be worn dressed up or dressed down. Uh, so I can see it. I can see this being a special occasion fragrance. I can see this one probably being worn in every season except for winter. I think maybe just because of the fresher elements, you can pull this off in the spring and summer totally, uh, but also a little bit in the fall if you have a bit of like a warmer day in the fall. And I think anybody of any age can wear this one as well, but I think it would suit a college student the best. And uh, in terms of the presentation, I think it's pretty cool. My final verdict on this one is, I'm not sure if they did a fantastic job in terms of replicating M7 Fresh because I've never smelled that fragrance. But given their track record, I would say it's quite close to M7 Fresh by Yves Saint Laurent. And I personally really enjoy this smell. Um, this is the type of fragrance that I would love to wear in the summertime when I just want something that is not your typical citrus aquatic fragrance. If I want something with like a darker edge to it, I would definitely reach for something before I would reach for, I don't know, some generic sort of sport fragrance or like, Kenneth Cole or Perry Ellis Pure Blue or something like that. I would much rather reach for something like this than those fragrances. I think it's a really solid scent. If you have a chance to get your nose on it, at the very least sample it, I would definitely recommend that you do so. I'm gonna leave links down below to where you can check out their fragrances. And uh, once again, I just wanna thank you all so much for tuning into this channel and watching this review. I really hope that you took something of value from this video. And if you did, I would love it if you could support this channel by subscribing to it. All you need to do is click that red button in the corner. And also please make sure to click on the notification bell. This way, whenever I do upload future fragrance related content, it'll get delivered straight to your feed and you never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. And of course that includes fragrance reviews just like this, but also top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, interviews, and a lot more. Thanks again for watching. I love you all and we'll see you soon. Bye.